It's been raining here for almost a week and it's really starting to feel like fall. We live pretty far north and so our autumn weather starts to roll in around the end of August. I'm not complaining, I really love fall and winter. I'm gonna make sourdough pumpkin cinnamon rolls today. Now I should have started the dough last night but I completely forgot so I'm going to get these started today and then make them tomorrow. It's still early for pumpkins to be ready to harvest where we live and so I've had a difficult time finding them locally, but I was really craving these and I do have two butternut squash, so I'm gonna make these with squash. I often substitute pumpkin with squash, especially when the recipes also call for pumpkin pie spice, because honestly, you really can't taste the difference. The first thing I'm going to do is to roast these two squash with a bit of coconut oil in the oven for about 45 minutes or until they're soft. Then I'm going to get the dough going. I am going to add a half cup of sourdough starter. I fed mine about four hours ago, so it's nice and bubbly and active. And then to that, I'm gonna add four cups of flour, a half cup of water, and one half cup of melted butter, a half cup of my roasted and pureed pumpkin or squash. a half cup of maple syrup, and a heaping tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. I'm going to knead this dough for a few minutes and then put it into a bowl and cover the bowl with a plate and leave it on the counter for at least five hours. Okay, so it's next day. Let's see how this dough is coming along. It's looking very bubbly. It's doubled in size, so it's ready to go. Now I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to this dough, two eggs, and a teaspoon each of baking soda and baking powder. a mixer you can use that I'm just going to use my spoon and hands now I'm going to make the cinnamon filling I'm going to add about three-fourths cup of soft unsalted butter to a bowl and mix in about half a cup of the squash or pumpkin puree I'm also going to add a tablespoon of cinnamon a tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice and one cup of coconut sugar the butter should be soft but not melted because if it's melted it will make the filling too liquidy I've made that mistake many times so make sure that you use just softened butter Once that's combined, I'm going to roll the dough flat until it's about a fourth inch thick, and then use a spatula or a wooden spoon to spread the cinnamon filling on top. As you'll see, they turned out a bit wonky looking, um, but the reason I still want to share this recipe despite how they look is that they're absolutely delicious. They don't look like the perfect cinnamon roll, but they really do taste delicious. So I wanted to share this recipe and maybe you could give it a try as well.
dough into a log and cut out 14 rolls. I like to bake my cinnamon rolls in a cast iron skillet, so I'm going to put them into my skillet, but you could also just put them swirl side up on a large baking tray. I'm going to put them into the oven, which is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 180 degrees Celsius, and leave them for about 20 minutes. While they are baking, I'm going to make the cream cheese topping by combining a cup of cream cheese, a third cup heavy cream, half a cup of maple syrup, and about two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Then I'm going to put that onto the stove top on low heat and simmer until everything is combined. Once the cinnamon rolls are out of the oven, I'm going to drizzle the topping over the rolls. I hope you give this recipe a try. I know they don't look like the perfect cinnamon rolls, but they definitely taste great with an espresso um, whenever you're sitting inside needing something sweet and warm and autumnal. This is a great one to go to. Until next time, thank you for stopping by. Today, I make two new videos every week sharing what I learned about simplifying food, self-care, and consumption in the modern world. Subscribe if that's of interest to you, and I'll speak to you in the next Documenting Simple Living video.